right, here's my calculator, or at least what I have of it so far. Um, I apologize for my shitty microphone. This is my first time trying to use it, and I didn't know it was so bad. The headset is all right otherwise. Uh, I'll try to make this as quick as I can so this doesn't end up being a super long video. I'm also not a YouTuber, so don't expect much. But I've been working on this calculator. I currently only have addition and subtraction working. Uh, I'm going to start working on multiplication next. I also have the display and the whole input thing. Um, so, but I figured this would be a good time to make a recording since I actually have some of it working. First up is, uh, here's the display unit, or I mean not the display, this is the input. So it's got a nice uh, note block keypad, very compact, just a nice 4x4 grid, which is read by a bunch of comparators and basically just sends signals through from each of these books. Um, giving a 0 to 9 or 1 to 10, however you look at it, uh, redstone signal. And it sends it into here, where each of uh, each of these little pairs of uh, comparators stores the value, and the pistons move up and down to uh, clear it and allow the next value to be put in. And it's basically just a system of those which uh, runs down this way, and moves each value from the next one over so that you can enter another. Um, over here it just splits into two inputs, because obviously if you're doing math you're always going to have two inputs, or at least a basic calculator. So you have the X in the top and the Y in the bottom, or X in the bottom, Y in the top, whichever you prefer, because variables be like that. Um, so let's see how it works. Let's just pick a random number, like 7. You right-click, and you can see some stuff going on down there. If I had um, a second account and knew how to record things, I could probably actually have a camera view over there while it's working. But unfortunately, I have to be over here to operate the panel. So you can't just really see it up close, what's going on. But there you see it. It uh, did the little zigzag on the top, which was each of the... Uh, storage cells resetting and taking the value from the next one over. So we have, that was 7. Uh, this one reads 0 to 9, so that looks like 8, but it's actually 7. Uh, the actual, those mostly run on um, 1 to 10. Or, give or take, it, it's weird. I'm going to have it all work in the end. So let's hit 5. Let's hit 1. And let's hit 4. You see it kind of takes a second to reset because... It all has to, it's all timed very carefully, and by carefully I mean trial and error, but, uh, yeah. <coughs> so then I hit the, uh, I have this button over here which says switch input. These all don't have outputs. Those actually go to these, the six function buttons or unprogrammed buttons come out here. So only number two is actually being used at the moment, and that is the switch input line, which when I click it, you can see this uh, lamp switched, and then over there, it just switched to the bottom bank, so now I'm entering the Y number, so let's go like four. Yada yada, you get the idea. So when I hit the uh, switch input line again, what it'll do is switch to the top one and then clear it. Uh, so whenever you switch to a line, it clears the one you're starting uh, so that you can enter a fresh number. 
Uh, eventually, this one's going to be like an equals button uh, or something. Maybe this one will be the equals button and this one will be the four functions. I'll uh, figure it out eventually. Okay, so moving on. Here we have a display unit. Um, I kind of stole this uh, 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 observer kind of encoder type deal from another uh, seven segment display that I saw on YouTube. Also the, it's kind of like just a, a enlarged version of that, but it works really well. So you have a book where you, ooh, uh oh, okay, I fucked it up. So I have a button set up specifically for this. Do that, do that, do that. There we go, back to zero. So it doesn't like it when you really mess with that a bunch. There's supposed to be a little circuit here. Uh, this actually extends the pulse for the encoder at the bottom, but clearly it's not foolproof. So, two. There you go. Five. Seven. Nine. You get the idea. And part of the uh, the hard part of dis of kind of uh, manipulating this design to fit my requirements was to I wanted it to be nicely tileable. So obviously I made one, copy pasted it next to another one. Then I was like, oh shit, these things are interfering and changed the design and went from there but finally I got it so they pretty much fit like right next to each other there's a two block gap up and down and a one block gap left and right but that's still pretty compact for a, um, a large seven segment display I guess I don't know I don't watch a lot of redstone videos I used to I don't know what uh, people are capable of these days. I know I've seen some really small seven segment displays, but they're using a bunch of weird mechanics and I don't understand it. I don't know how they do it. Obviously I could watch uh, here's how you build this video and just copy it block by block, but that's really lame. Um, so I just kind of design things how my brain works. So the whole idea of this calculator is to use uh, comparators only, uh, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to avoid encoders. Obviously, the uh, seven segment has a couple encoders in it, depending on how you define that word. Um, but all of the computation is going to be done like actually computing. So, comparators, if you know how they work, only do subtraction. And they only do 0 to 15 signal strength. So you can't simply add two numbers together. And you also can't just simply subtract numbers because uh, you're missing a bunch of digits and also you can't go negative. So right here we have uh, an addition circuit. So what it's actually doing is you have two signals coming from either side that are at the maximum and that's not a good example of it because that's coming in from the carry from the left one but basically you do um, 15 minus x minus y subtracted away from 15 again and that gets you um, a positive and then if the result say like 9 plus 9 is 16 that's higher or 18 that's higher than 15 so what you actually have to do is then uh, it turns on this carry bit which sends the plus one over to the next bank or the next adder and then it uh, reverses so it does like 10 minus um, 
X minus Y or Y minus X. I'd have to look at my drawings right now. I don't remember ex off, exactly off the top of my head, but uh, that's basically how it works. So let's let's see it working. This video is already 10 minutes long. This is not good. Let's do like 2358 plus 1241. I don't know. <coughs> so X is on the right and Y is on the left. This is like 1. 10, 100, 1,000. So, um, 2351. So, the answer appears to be 3599. That looks about right to me. So there you go. Now on to subtraction. I built this in like a few different parts and then like kind of stuck them together. Um, so this is uh, just like plain subtraction. It has an issue where it can't do negatives because it, when you're doing subtraction, you have to have a carry and that it gets subtracted away from the next one. Well, what if the last one doesn't have anything to carry from? Uh, so I had to build a whole separate circuit, which is that one. And what that does is uh, it actually determines whether the outcome of the full subtraction will be negative, basically by seeing if there's anything to subtract away from on the farthest left bit of the second input. Um, and what it does is if it determines that uh, it is going to cause a problem, uh, or if it is going to be negative, then it just switches the inputs. And I got a neat little input switcher here. Just like that. It could have been smaller than this. I didn't have to use this whole piston thing, but what I, I was trying to make it fit within a five wide spot so that it could line up with the... Uh, the subtractor so um, yeah it's a little bulkier than it would have been otherwise so let's do a uh, simple subtraction let's do like 458 1 minus 134 I don't know 4581 Answer appears to be three, three, four, seven. Uh, yeah, that looks about right to me. And then over here we have the completed uh, circuit where I uh, pasted that alongside that. Um, and you can see them here, it actually does the uh, negative input switch first, and then it just sends that directly into the regular um, uh, subtraction unit. Uh, addition, you're, if you remember, I mentioned that it does switch the inputs as well, and you might wonder, like, why does this one need such a big circuit when this one seems to have it just built in? Uh, that's because it's just simpler with addition you can just use two separate circuits for the uh, for the uh, calculation y plus x has its own circuit and x plus y has its own circuit they're separated that's the top one that's the bottom one and then they go both come to the same output but the subtraction 
is uh, a lot larger and more complicated, and I can't just simply stick two of them together without making the whole thing way more efficient, inefficient. So it's easier to just switch the inputs first uh, uh, using the same uh, connections and then just send it to the same unit. So let us do some math. Let us do... Let's do the opposite. One, two, three, four, minus 45, 81. So, one, two, three, four, 45, 81. Uh, you didn't really get to see the uh, switcher work because it was already doing a negative calculation, but I'll just, uh, for your benefit, there you go. That's negative, or I mean, that's positive, and then that's negative. And the answer, so we have the negative bit right there. That's just going to connect directly up to the display. Um, I'm probably eventually, in the end, I'm probably going to use, um, six, six, uh, digits for the inputs and then probably 12 digits for the output so that I can do multiplication. You have to have twice as many digits. Um, but let's see if we got our answer correct. We got negative three, three, four, seven. That look right. Uh, I think so. Check my calculator. Three, four, seven. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. I would have thought that four minus one would be three. But there you go. That works. I'm probably going to have to record this video. It is 17 minutes long.